Hi everyone, Gary here for the Amigos. Uh, today I'm just going to go through a, a rebuild of this uh, Amiga 3000 here. So I've got a uh, motherboard here that was uh, faulty, partly faulty. It wasn't displaying uh, to the VGA port here. Uh, I had RGB output. Uh, everything else seemed to be running fine. So um, I sent it away for repair. And uh, there's a guy in Christchurch in New Zealand here that does uh, Amiga repairs. And um, he does, does a very, very good job. So he's repaired a number of my boards uh, that I uh, can't fix myself. I've done a little bit with this one. This one was suffering from a, a bit of corrosion around here. Uh, I've done a video or actually a blog post on that one. Um, but yes, there, there was quite damaged around this area. So I cleaned it up best I could. Anyway, um, this is all set to put back into the case here. So um, he also provides a really in-depth um, check sheet here uh, that goes lists through all the different uh, items here. Uh, it says whether they've passed or failed or not applicable. Uh, so he's tested the VGA port, okay, at 15 kilohertz and 30 kilohertz to the screen. Uh, a little tag there to say when the um, real-time clock battery was replaced and when it needs to be replaced again so not due until 2023 and you also see on the actual board here there's a sticker there as well so um, you see he's very thorough and um, does a very good job so I'm going to uh, go ahead and fit this now. So I'm starting with um, looking at the floppy disk drive here. And I'm just going to have a look at what state this is in. And uh, as you can see it's fairly uh, dusty and dirty there so I'll give that a good uh, clean out. And then um, it's just a matter of cleaning the heads which is just a case of gently uh, pulling up this uh, where the reed heads are here you want to be careful not to pull that too hard and just get a uh, cotton bud or a q-tip soaked in isopropyl alcohol and just give the little heads a clean under there and I also put a little bit of lithium grease just on this uh, worm shaft here uh, that's the drive for the head there see that moving back and forth there I give that a little bit of a lube up so I'll uh, give that a clean and uh, be back right that's looking a lot cleaner there now and uh, I've got the grease on the shaft there I also put a very uh, very very small drop of uh, oil sewing machine oil down on this little bearing here just a very fine drop where the shaft heads into the motor there and I've cleaned the heads so that should be all set to go there so I'll put that uh, floppy drive back together then it's just a matter of mounting the motherboard where the cat is right now so first job get rid of the cat and then I'll mount the board in there so back soon right so you should be able to just slip that in like so there we go and we've got four uh, long standoff posts here that hold um, the power supply plane and so the power supply is in this area here sits on a uh, sheet of metal and, um, and the hard drive sits in about here floppy drive about here so this these are just standoff posts for mounting that section And 
then just two screws down the back here. So that's the board mounted. So the first part here will just be assembling. So I'm just putting the uh, uh, power connector down onto the uh, into the main board connector here before I screw everything up. Hopefully, it won't screw things up too much, but you know what I mean. And uh, looks like there's been a repair job done on these cables here. I've checked those, they're okay, they're isolated properly, I'll probably tidy that up at some stage. And um, that just sits in like so. And then there's two, two screws at the back, uh, three in the front here, and then uh, the floppy disk drive just uh, slots in over here like so and um, well, so all I need to do is uh, put the mounting, there's uh, little mounting screws to go on here uh, there's another screw down here that attaches the um, this main this uh, sub chassis here and um, there's also turn that around a little riser card that uh, slots down here so uh, to allow you know any other uh, expansion boards and whatnot to plug in so that gets uh, plugged in down here um, I'm not going to do that at this stage. I don't have any other cards for this one at the moment. Um, and so, yeah, that's about it. There's a little LED connector there for the front LEDs. And um, oh, yeah, floppy, floppy drive connector, probably should have hooked that up first back out floppy disk cable which is not compatible because this is a PC one and it's got a little blinking pin there thought that might have fit but that's actually a PC one I uh, I need to find the right cable there so so I've put this together uh, sort of temporarily until I uh, find the floppy drive cable and um, so I, I'm just really putting in the uh, the bare minimum of the screws and whatnot uh, just so that I can uh, fire it up give it a go so um, yeah there's a mounting screw here and here for the um, the sub chassis uh, that hole there is where the screw goes through for the to hold the lid on and then um, I've also installed the two screws here which uh, hold the side of the board in and um, this one here for the floppy drive and that one there also for the uh, sub chassis and screw missing there which I'll put in later uh, because I have to take this back out, fit the uh, floppy drive cable and um, attach it to the floppy here to uh, to actually be able to boot the thing but um, I'll hook it up and uh, show you what it looks like in this configuration here Okay, so sort of corruption on the screen I think is actually the screen itself. I think the uh, caps might be getting a bit tired. Uh, but anyway, that's what you get when um, you don't have any 
kickstart disk and uh, so I need to put in a uh, super kickstart disk for the Omega 3000 and um, then we get to the uh, the boot screen that you'll normally see that you're familiar with when you uh, boot a machine which has got kickstart and ROM like an Omega 500 for instance then you put in the uh, workbench disk or your game disk or application disk uh, or uh, you can figure it to boot from the hard drive so yeah uh, next step is to just um, as I say get that uh, floppy disk cable connected and uh, get it booting at least from the floppy maybe uh, sh show, it, show off a game or something on there and then um, in another video as well I'll do the hard drive installation so yeah until then, thanks for watching.